Well, hello, Mount Zion, and all of you who have tuned in today. We welcome you to another segment of Deeper Dive. Today, we are in part three of Minding My Mental Health right here at Mount Zion, Nashville. I'm Pastor Katina, Associate Pastor of Congregational Care, and it is our earnest desire to care for our congregants one member at a time. We thank you for joining us today for Bible study and for the rest of this month as we demonstrate care for your mental health. We thank you for joining us each week and allowing this ministry to be a blessing unto your life. And so since you're here with us, we just ask that you will go ahead and hit like. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure that you make comments today. If you hear something that you like or that uh, is confirmation to you, and please, please, please make sure always that you share this experience with someone that you know would be blessed as you have been blessed by it. Now, Miles Zion, you know we want you to connect with us, so please do follow our ministry at Mount Zion Nashville. We want you to follow Bishop too at Joseph Walker 3. And also, go out and follow Dr. Steph. She can be followed at Dr. Steph Walker. Mazan, you know we want to keep you informed about everything that we have going on here at the Mount. We have so much going on. And this Sunday is a Sunday of all Sundays. We are going to celebrate all of our high school graduates. Such a noteworthy time to celebrate these who have gained this achievement. And on All Tithe Sunday, can somebody say God did it again to give back into the community and to sow into the future of our college and our high school students? Malzahn, we thank you for sowing. And because of your sowing, we look forward to sowing into the lives of our scholarship recipients. All of our high school graduates, I said all, all of our high school graduates who are active in this ministry are going to receive $1,000 scholarships toward their college education. Somebody ought to say praise God right there. And I tell you, that is such a blessing. Well, before we go into part three of this five-part series, certainly we want to sow into this ministry and tell God thank you for the ways in which he continues to bless us. The ways for you to give, they're right there on the screen. So whichever way is most comfortable for you, please give like God has so generously given unto you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for another opportunity to give. We thank you, Father, even now that you are receiving the gifts that we are sowing into the kingdom. We ask, God, that as you receive them, that you will multiply them, oh God, so that we can continue to advance your kingdom right here in the earth. God, we give this over to you now and we declare that it is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you're ready for part three of Minding Our Mental Health. We have another very special guest with us today. Her name is Aisha Keller. She's a former social worker and now serves as a professor in the social work department right here at our Nashville State Community College. She is a certified life coach, and today she will be sharing with us about cultivating safe spaces, ensuring that we can live out our best lives by establishing a solid community of folk around us so we don't have to live life in isolation. I hope you're ready to hear from her because she is certainly ready to share with you. Mount Zion, let's dig into part three of this series. Hello, Mount Zion. My name is Aisha Keller. I'm here today to talk to you about cultivating safe spaces, community combats isolation. So just a little about me. I am a life coach, a social work professor. I am a church fit trainer here at Mount Zion, and I'm the author of the book, The Butterfly Devotions. So I am married to Chris. We've been married for almost 12 years. We have three boys. I am from Chicago, moved to Nashville about 13 years ago, but I went to college in Columbia, Missouri at the University of Missouri. And while I was there, I was looking for people to connect with, right? I'm in a new town, I'm at a new school, new city. And so I'm trying to find my people, right? And so I connected with this group called Spirit-Filled Student Ministries. And this was a Christian ministry, a group on campus, and these people became my people 
people. They became my crowd. We had Bible studies. We had um, we volunteered on Saturday mornings. We would have these parties that we called gospel jams where we would have Bible study and then we would turn on some music. We would have pizza. We would play games and then we would dance to gospel rap. So we would do line dances because no twerking, no touching, right? We were trying to keep it holy. So this was my crew, right? And I rolled with them for the first three years of my college career. But then something started to happen. Because this was a Bible study group, we were trying to get closer to God. We were, I started to feel stretched and challenged to get closer to God, to uh, increase my commitment to the Lord, right? And I just didn't want to do that. I wasn't ready to be transparent. I was like, mm, that's too much. I'm not trying to be that holy. I'm not trying to do all that. And so as a result of that, I started to pull back from God. I started to pull back from my group, from my friends. I started ignoring phone calls. I started hanging out in my room. I started to pull back from everything and everyone, including God. What that led to was this downward spiral. So I ended up getting depressed. I ended up being angry with God, angry with my friends, angry with everybody, right? And you've heard of the freshman 15, so I had already gained that. And so I gained another senior 20, if that's a thing, right? So it just was all bad. And it became this situation where the enemy was playing with my mind and playing with my identity, much in the same way that when you have an abuser and a victim in a domestic violence relationship, textbook pattern of abusers is they start to pull the victim back from their loved ones, right? Oh, they don't love you like I do. Oh, I don't really like them. I don't think they're a good influence. I think you need to be with me all the time. Let's just be together. Let's just, it's just me and you against the world, right? And they do that because they don't want any other dissenting voice around them to, around the victim to tell them, hey, that treatment that you're receiving is not right. Hey, you are worth more than that. They want to be the only only support, resource, and voice in the mind of the victim so that they can begin to lie to them, to abuse them further, to warp their identity. And that is the same thing that the enemy does when we pull ourselves away from God, when we isolate ourselves and make this choice to kind of be on our own because we don't trust, because we've been hurt, because we've been offended. So when you think about all of those things, let's go to the word first before we do that. Let's go to Proverbs Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Another version says, he who willfully separates and estranges himself from God and man, which is what I had done, seeks his own desire and pretext to break out against all wise and sound judgment. A self-confident fool has no delight in understanding, but only in revealing his personal opinions and himself. And so what we in effect do when we isolate ourselves and we choose to be alone uh, in excess, what we're doing is then choosing our own voice and then choosing to hear just the enemy. And then there's no one around to challenge us. There's no one around to encourage us. And we all know that when you are not challenged, you cannot grow and you cannot thrive. So now that we've established that isolation is not God's will for our life, that is not what he wants for us, we are built for community, how do we then cultivate a safe space? What does cultivate even mean? To cultivate means to prepare and use land for crops or gardening, to try to acquire or develop a quality, sentiment, or skill, and try to win friendship or favor of someone. The Latin word of that word of cultivate is colere, and that means to promote or improve the growth of through labor and intention. So we're going to come back to this labor and intention piece because we live in this instant gratification, like go, 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 microwave, 15 second real society, right? Where everything has to be quick. But when we want to cultivate safe spaces, we have to be aware that it's going to take some work and we're, it's going to take some intention and some focus and some effort. Let's define safe space. So a safe space is a place or environment in which a person or category is feels safe, does not feel um, harassed or criticized or discriminated against, where they do not have to fear any mo emotional or physical harm. So doesn't that sound amazing? A place where you don't have to be in your feelings, where nobody's triggering you. And if they are triggering you, you can say, hey, I didn't like that. And they can take accountability and say, okay, I am sorry. And everybody can accept each other for who they are. So how do we do this? How do we cultivate safe spaces for ourselves? And how do we become a safe space for those of us, those that are around us? 
The first step is to cultivate your relationship with the Lord. Now, this may seem like, oh, of course I have a relationship with God. But many of us have been hurt. Many of us have been offended. Many of us have been abused. I don't know anybody out here these days that's trauma free. Right. And so what do you do when you have an electronic gadget that is broken, that you don't know what's wrong with it, especially if you just got it and you really want to use it? What do you do with it? You go to the manufacturer's manual, you go to their website, you go to the person who created it, the company who created it, and you try and figure out how can I fix this? What can I do differently? What button do I need to push? What da- what app do I need to download? Right. And so if there's something wrong with me, if I need healing, if I am broken, I need to go to my manufacturer factor. I need to go to my heavenly father and seek my healing and be fixed and be changed, right? And so if you can't figure out what's wrong with you and how to and how to be fixed, how to have healthier relationships, how to get into a place where you are whole and where you are free, you've got to go to your heavenly father. You've got to talk to him. I um, had a moment where I was like, okay, God, you know, what do I say for this for this talk? with the people of God. And the thing that I heard was, I want them. I want to be in relationship with them. God wants me. He wants me completely. He wants you completely, right? And so when we get in that place where we are in complete and whole connection with God, that is a pathway, the environment for us to be complete and whole with others. The Bible says, this is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. That's John 15, 12. When you're playing with a baby, a baby that's well taken care of, if you smile at that baby, that baby smiles back. If you laugh, they laugh. If you play peekaboo, they react, they respond. When you get in close contact with God, when you get in an intimate relationship with God, then you begin to see yourself the way that he sees you. You come to know him and you begin to revel in his love. You begin to feel his love all around you, all within you. You begin to relax in his love. And as you do that, your confidence rises, your self-esteem rises, your view of yourself rises. How do you get to that point? How do you get to the point where you are seeing yourself the way that God sees you? you get in his presence. I think God's love language is quality time, right? You get in his presence. And notice I didn't just say pray, right? Because sometimes when we pray, we, you know, we throw out a few thank yous. Thank you for my car. Thank you for my kids. Thank you for my house. Thank you for my health. Also, can you do these things? And then we list a a list of, you know, to do's for God. And then we're like, okay, thank you. Amen. Or we're seeking God for a specific thing, like to be healed or like to uh, have, get more money or a different job. And then at that point, you know, once we get it or don't get it, we're done, right? But what is intimate relationship like? It's that constant connection with God. It's like when you get a new boo and you're constantly texting and you're constantly on the phone and you're with them for six hours and then you text them five minutes after you leave each other. What you doing? Right. It's that constant connection. It's that constant desire to be with God, to spend time with him, to hear from him, to know him. Right. And so get in God's presence. Get the worship music playing. I love Victor Thompson. Get in your word. Don't just read your scripture a day. This is a part I'm working on. Don't just read the scripture away to get the devil away, but really study your word, right? Really get into the word of God, because that is how you learn who God is and who he says that you are. And that is how you build that one-on-one connection with your father. And then you begin again to love yourself, to feel better about yourself. And you recognize that your flaws are there, but God can use those as well, which leads to my next point. The second point is to cultivate your relationship with yourself. So I want you to take a pause for a moment and I want you to get in your mind someone that you do not like. I mean, this person, you see them coming, you're heading in the other direction. They call, you're hitting ignore. This person is triggering. They make you cringe. They upset you without even trying. You just cannot deal with this person. This is somebody on your do not call list, right? I don't like you. Stay away from me. So get that person in mind. Now imagine that you have to be handcuffed to that person for six months. The key is thrown away. Nothing you can do about it. You have to be handcuffed to this person for six months. So that means they're going everywhere with you. They're going to work with you. They're going to school with you. They're going to the bathroom with you. They're going to lunch with you. They're going to the birthday party with you, to the cookout with you. They are with you every single moment for six months. 
how much do you think you'll be enjoying life handcuffed to this person that you don't like? How discontented would you be? How much dis-ease and constant irritation would you feel even doing the things that you normally enjoy? This is what it's like when we expect to enjoy our lives and have healthy relationships, but we don't like ourselves, right? Wherever you go, there you are, right? And so if you don't like yourself, how can you enjoy life? How can you be and engage in healthy, enjoyable relationships, mutually beneficial relationships if you don't like yourself? So it's so important to cultivate your relationship with yourself, to grow with labor and intention, your relationship with yourself. And that's why the first step is to cultivate your relationship with God. Because once you are reveling in his love and have received his love for yourself, then you can then and love yourself, right? You can, if the God of the whole universe loves me, I can love myself, right? I can like myself. I can like being around me. Well, how do you do that if you don't like yourself, if you're already in a cycle of self-loathing and self-destruction? First of all, examine your self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? Do you say things to yourself that you would never say to your child or your best friend or your little sister? Are you constantly on this spiral of, I'm not good enough. I'm never going to meet my goals. I'm ugly. I'm too fat. I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to have enough money. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong with me. Is that what your self-talk is like? If it is, that has to change immediately, right? You're talking to the daughter of the son of God. You cannot speak to him or her that way, right? And so how can you change that? Memorize, meditate, focus, and speak aloud the word of God over your life. You can Google scriptures about my identity in Christ. And you can get about 30, 40 scriptures that will tell you who you are in him. And then you need to focus on speaking those words out loud. You need to focus on memorizing and meditating on that word. And this is not a one and done. Okay. So I want to tell you that now. That's why we started off with labor and intention, right? So it may be a week and you're like, I don't feel nothing. I still, I'm still over it. Two weeks. I still, you know, I still am not feeling it. But then after a few months, after six months, after a year, your whole identity begins to change. And the reason I focused on speaking the word is because I heard something so powerful the other day. You cannot beat negative thoughts with positive thoughts. You need to beat thoughts with words. Our Heavenly Father created the entire universe by speaking. We are in his image. He didn't come down and use his hands and get a jackhammer and excavator and a tractor. He spoke. That's it. And we are created in his image. The Bible says in Proverbs that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And so if you want to change anything, you need to speak the word over it, including how you feel about yourself. Speak it out. Use the power of your words. When you speak, you are engaging your mind, you are engaging your mouth, and you are engaging your ears so that you can hear the word of God and what God says about you. So that is cultivating your relationship with yourself. You can even ask some loved ones, some people that you trust and that you love and know that love you. Hey, what are five things about me that you enjoy? What are five things about me that are strengths of mine? And the reason you can you can do that and it can be helpful is because a lot of times we don't see the good in ourselves. There are things about ourselves that are great, that are wonderful, that we don't even recognize. And it takes someone speaking into us and saying, no, you're really good at this. Or you really are, when you smile, my whole world lights up. You're so helpful. You're so thoughtful. You're so creative. And knowing those things and hearing those things from other people can really build us up. Secondly, oh, and let's not forget this as a mental health professional, go to therapy. Go to therapy, right? I have a therapist. I consider myself pretty emotionally healthy. I'm a mental health professional, but go ahead and get you a therapist. There's no shame in that. I think we're finally getting over that stigma in our community, but go ahead and get someone who is a professional who can hear you, who can objectively help you process things so that again, you can build this relationship with yourself. And then lastly, cultivate your relationship with other people. How do you do that? Again, so many of us have been hurt. So many of us have been offended, rejected by the very people that were supposed to love us, that were supposed to protect us. And so it can feel scary and downright stupid to go out into the world and try to reconnect with people and try to make safe spaces and be in community. Sometimes we are at a point where we're like, no, thank you. That doesn't make sense. I'm not going to do that in the name of self-preservation, right? 
But what I'll say is this. I don't know of a scripture in the word of God that says you have to trust people. There might be one. I haven't read that one. I do know that it says that we should trust in the Lord with all our hearts, right? And lean not into our own understanding. That's in Proverbs 3, right? And so if I trust God and I have done this first step and I'm constantly in the process of cultivating my relationship with my heavenly father, that he will give me discernment. The Holy Spirit in me that lives in me as a believer will give me discernment and tell me, okay, this one here, that one you can trust, that one you can talk to, that one you can share with, that one you can be in community with and you can share space with, right? This one, no ma'am, steer clear, not for you, right? And we can trust that God will give us that discernment to know who to connect with and who not. And so we don't have to be out in the world guarded and angry and trying to keep people back because we're trying to protect ourselves. We are children of the most high God. God is protecting us. God can give us the discernment to figure out who to connect with and who not to connect with. And if something goes wrong, he will be there to catch us, right? We, none of us are without sin. So we will be hurt. We will be offended. It will happen. And so how can I make sure that I'm still showing up fully and being present and ready to connect with who I need to connect with? I can trust in the Lord. I can trust that he has my back and that he will show me what to do, where to do it and when to do it. The other thing about connecting with others and getting and cultivating safe spaces and connecting is to get involved. You know, a lot of times we come to church and we sit down and before the benediction can get out of the pastor's mouth good, we're out the door trying to get to the parking lot, right? Because we don't want to be in the traffic, right? But how about getting involved in church? We have, all of us have greatness in us. All of us have gifts and talents. So if you're a good baker, graphic designer, organizer, you love kids, you cook well, you clean well, whatever it is you do well, do that in the four walls too. Do that for you're being blessed by this ministry. So you bless the ministry that you're a part of, right? So yes, you use your gifts and talents out in the workforce and out in the community in your home. And then you bring them to the house of the Lord for your brothers and sisters. So your, our gifts and talents are to bless each other and to glorify God. And when you do that, when you get involved, you will find that you are surrounded by like-minded people that you want to be in safe spaces with, that you want to cultivate safe spaces with and be in community with. So make sure that that's another thing that is on the list. Something else, show yourself friendly. Be open, smile, be warm. And again, back to this first step, it's going to keep coming up because our safest space is with Jesus and his presence. Get that relationship in line. When that relationship is in line, and, and we're all always getting there. We've never arrived. But when that relationship is something that you are constantly cultivating, then you are in a position where you don't have to force a smile. You don't have to force being friendly. You don't have to force being a safe space for someone else. It comes as second nature to you because you are full of the love of Christ. You know who Jesus is. And so your hope is in him. You are on a strong foundation. And so you are not weary. You are not uh, sick of people, right? Because you have got Got him within you and he is living and breathing on the inside of you. The other thing, engage in your hobbies. I'll just be super transparent. I have a bad habit of getting on Instagram and watching other people do stuff that I want to do, right? That makes no sense. Get out and do those things that you want to do. If you like skating, get out and skate. If you, there's a Facebook group that is an, of interest to you that has, that's focused on something that you're interested in, join it or start your own. If you enjoy traveling, travel. If you're thinking, well, Aisha, I don't have the money to travel. Listen, um, you can go on Broadway and uh, pretend like you've never been because most people that live in a city or don't go to the tourist, touristy areas and be a tourist in your own city. Get out, enjoy your life, be open and recognize that when I cultivate my relationship with Christ and I cultivate my relationship with myself, I can provide that safe space. I can, and then I can be an asset to other safe spaces. I don't have the need to gossip. I don't have the need to be competitive. I don't have the need to constantly Constantly guard myself because I am, I've built my spirit. I am in line with Jesus. I am letting him love on me and loving him back. I like my 
myself. I like who I am and I therefore can like others and be comfortable with other people. Finding your safe space takes vulnerability and it takes strength, but it is worth it. Even the word of God says in James 5, 16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to one who is alone and fails and falls and does not have another to help. Again, if two lie together, they keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? So the word of God is telling us that community and safe spaces are what is going to keep us moving on. It's going to keep us encouraged. It's going to keep us growing and thriving. I want to leave you with this. Our current Sur Surgeon General, Vivek Murthy, said that the effects of loneliness on our health and on our well-being are equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So loneliness, those who report being lonely and isolated, are more likely to experience dementia, heart disease, and stroke. So in effect, isolating yourself, being lonely, staying out of community is shortening your life. So I encourage you today to take these steps to cultivate your relationship with Jesus, to cultivate your relationship with yourself, and then cultivate relationships with others so that you can combat isolation with community and cultivate safe spaces. Thank you and God bless you. Well, Mount Zion, I know you have been blessed by what you've heard today. And again, I pray that every word that was spoken has fallen upon ears and hearts that have been made open by God. God never, ever intended for us to live our lives in silo. Absolutely not. That is a trick of the enemy because he knows that when you operate in that manner, you can begin to believe that you are operating on an island all by yourself and that you have to navigate life alone. Please take advantage of the people that God has placed in your path and allow them to bless you with their love and their support. I'm sure that as you do that, there will be some reciprocity there and you'll also be a blessing to them. Well, Mount Zion, if you have decided to make Jesus your choice today and make Mount Zion your choice for the ministry that you want to connect with, we ask right there on your phone that you would text salvation to 78228. Please text the word salvation to 78228 and someone from our team will get back with you and make sure that you get connected with us. So join us next week for part four, Minding My Mental Health, where we will be talking about a very sensitive topic in our world today. We're gonna to be talking about suicide. We will be talking not only about suicide awareness so that you can be more aware of the signs that could lead to suicide, but we're gonna also talk about suicide prevention so that you can take the necessary steps to save a life that God created, even if it's your own. Oh, we're going deep, guys. So we want to see you next week for part four. Until then, go find and establish your community. God bless. We'll see you next week.